With New Year's Eve a few days away, many of us will be imbibing at least a little. And of all your options, you may believe that red wine is the best choice for your health. You may even consider it to be somewhat of a health food in the ranks with olive oil and green tea. So is it a potent protector, or is that just what wine lovers would like to believe? Here to tell us about the pros and cons of including a little vino in our diet is our resident food coach and registered dietitian, Cynthia Sass. Hello. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me back. So let's talk about the, the health-related pros and cons mm -hmm. of red wine. Let's start with the pros. Okay, so the pros of drinking any alcohol at all are that it is known to reduce the risk of heart disease, a number one killer of men and women. And also, moderate wine drinkers in particular tend to be very healthy. They're actually leaner than abstainers. They exercise more, and they tend to have healthier diets. So there's something about red wine drinking that tends to cluster with other healthy behaviors. On the con side, okay. however, <laughs> the relationship between alcohol consumption, including red wine or white wine, and heart disease is what we call a J-curve. So mm -hmm. what that means is um, people who don't drink have a slightly higher risk of heart disease. Then with moderate consumption, the risk goes down. Then above moderate consumption, it starts to skyrocket, and it increases with an increasing alcohol intake. And we know that above moderate drinking of any kind, including your red wine, right. also increases the risk of stroke, high blood pressure, cancers of the upper gastrointestinal tract, um, and of course, liver cirrhosis. So, you know, the bottom line is moderation is really important. Right. And even in moderation, wine or any alcohol increases the risk of breast cancer. That's really important for women out there who have any kind of family history. Um, one study found that in postmenopausal women, those who drank less than one drink a day on average actually had a 30% greater risk of dying from breast cancer than women who didn't drink. And how about the yeah. recurrence of breast cancer coming yeah. back? Yeah, and, and that study found that in pe women who've had breast cancer, mm -hmm. the risk of reoccurrence was, again, 30% higher in women who had about three to four drinks a week compared to those who had one or less drinks a week. Huh. So you want to really weigh those pros and cons. Bottom line is if you don't drink, don't start for your health <laughs> benefits. About 45% of Americans don't drink at all, which mm -hmm. is fine. There's other ways to reduce your risk of heart disease. Well, you have said moderation probably yes. about 10 times. <laughs> right. So that is the key there. It is. It's very right. important. So how often if you do drink and how much should you drink? Yeah, so you need to know a couple of things. Number one is what is a serving of alcohol? And in case of wine, it's five ounces, mm -hmm. which is a little bit less than a yogurt container. The equivalent to that in beer and in liquor is 12 ounces of beer, so a bottle or a can, and one shot of 80 proof distilled spirits. So for your wine, five ounces is one drink, and all the guidelines say that women should have no more than one drink a day, okay. and men should have no more than two but you can't save them up for the weekend. So that means you can't not have any during Monday through Friday and then have a whole bottle on Saturday. It doesn't right. quite work that way. You've done so, over yeah. But if, you're, you know, if you don't drink wine, the other thing that you can do is have juice. We do know that pomegranate juice, 100% pomegranate, for example, has a higher antioxidant content than red wine. And Concord grape juice, 100%, was very close to red wine as well. So you have a lot of options. Let's talk about the differences between red wine and white wine. Mm -hmm. Is white wine as good for you as red wine? It actually is. Now, that's surprising to some right. people because you always think the red is really important for the, the beautiful pigment has those antioxidants. Mm -hmm. It does have more antioxidants, but there was a Spanish study that looked at the difference between these two in health benefits. So these lucky women were recruited to drink wine every day for four weeks, and what they found at the end of the study is that both groups, red wine and white wine drinkers, had an increase in their HDL, the good cholesterol, uh -huh. which is very heart protective, and they also both had reduced blood markers for inflammation, which we know is kind of a known trigger of aging and disease. So good news for white wine lovers. So white wine has fewer sulfites. Is it does, correct? especially dry white wine. So sulfites are something that are generally added to wine to help preserve it, but they're actually a normal byproduct of winemaking. So there's really no such thing as a sulfite-free wine. So if you're sensitive, you can go with the dry whites or you can go with organic mm -hmm. because they're not allowed to add sulfites in organic wine. Well, we're seeing a lot more organic wine on yes. the market. Are, is it better for you? Definitely, because regular um, winemaking grapes are exposed to a wide range of pesticides, um, fer herbicides, fungicides. In fact, in California, of the top 50 pesticides that are used in winemaking, 
17 are considered to be very toxic and mm -hmm. one is a known cancer causer. And so if you can that? go with organic, um, that's even better. And so what should you look for on the label? Look for the words certified organic. You can okay. look for the USDA seal, the organic seal, the, the green and white little label. And the great news is, again, no sulfites. You don't have to worry about that if you get the stuffy nose, the right. headaches, the sneezing that sometimes people get after drinking wine. Now, I w I'm curious about the sugar content because a lot of people talk about, you know, that you get that beer belly if you drink <laughs> beer. But you right. know, do you get that if you drink wine? Um, not with the dry wines. These okay. actually have less than one gram of sugar per serving, so for the five ounces. Mm -hmm. Now, in a sweeter wine, that may be a lot higher. In fact, it could be up to 10 grams of sugar, but that's because not, you know, in regular wine, all the naturally occurring sugar from grapes is fermented into alcohol, so there's really none left over. But in sweet wine, not all of it gets converted, and they may actually add some additional sugar. So go with the dry, go with the traditional instead of the sweet dessert wines. Before we leave, do you have a favorite that you suggest? I'm a red lover myself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> organic, though. Go organic. with the organic if okay. you can. Great. Cynthia, thank you so much. Great thank tips. You. Really appreciate it. And for all the great information and for more great health and nutrition information, you can always check out the health page at ABC.